I did not Wait, turn you onto the show. Gifs. <laughs> what was it? Diffy? Milfs. Yes. Mother. Replace the M with a D. Dilfs. Dilfs. Good job. <laughs> Wow. I, I should this word. Oh, on... I learned what a Jeff was today. It's a dad I'd like to fuck. <laughs> Good evening, everybody. Welcome back to Spirits and Ghost Stories. I'm your host, Thomas Aarons. And I'm Carly Bird. Week 67. Week 67. We are here, guys. Happy January. Happy February. Um, I was going to say Thanksgiving is in the, the rear view mirror, but that's a, no shit. Wow. But uh, Valentine's Day is coming up. <gasps> it is. Oh, my gosh. And here I thought we were out of all of the holidays. I was like, okay, we've got through Christmas. We got through his birthday. We got through my birthday. We got through my mom's birthday. We got through his siblings' birthdays. My siblings' birthday. Oh, everything was jam-packed in December and January. And it just felt. What is the worst holiday? Christmas. Let me rephrase that. I don't even have to think about that one. What is the worst pol politicized holiday? Because to me, it's Valentine's Day. <sighs> Easter I has mean, like what people are stretching. Like... Halloween. No, it's got it's it's a long holiday. Valentine's Day is very short. It's been around forever. Thanksgiving's been around forever. Spoiler: Christmas, Easter, they've been around forever. Valentine's Day feels like a very much a corporate holiday. Of like, oh yeah, guys, hey, we need to add something here. So really like jack up card sales after Christmas. Like, right. I, I just don't, I don't like Valentine's Day. It just give feels, us something else to decorate for. It just feels spring. hollow. It just feels very hollow to me. I don't know why. Yeah. Yeah. I don't really understand what Valentine's I mean, Day is all about. Let me just... rephrase it. Where would you tear it? <sighs> See what I mean? It's like, would it be high or be low? So it, it's, it's hard to, it's hard to answer that question because first of all. I'm grabbing my drink right from there. Keep talking. First of all, my family AKA my mother always made a huge deal about Valentine's Day. It is her favorite holiday. It's nearly like every holiday. She's like one. Of, she's like a little burrito. She's We're gonna get into that movie by the way. But he's like a little burrito. It's like Christmas, the favorite holiday. Thanksgiving, the favorite holiday. No, no, no. It it's Valentine's Day. It's her favorite holiday, besides my birthday. Haha, <laughs> just kidding. But <laughs> she loves chocolate covered strawberries. She loves making cards for everyone. She loves uh, heart stickers and candy hearts and um, chocolate covered marshmallows. Like I, I remember growing up, like it was a very big deal. We, <laughs> the first time we ever watched Shrek was on Valentine's day. And we did that with chocolate covered strawberries and like chocolate covered marshmallows and we had all made our own we just had like this massive tub that i was just like eating out of and that's basically how i remember shrek is like on valentine's day that is a really cool story because i didn't know that <laughs> i know you well, no didn't. shit tom like yeah don i'm making an interesting story if you never heard it before <laughs> um no just like how it ties into like okay shrek is a really cool movie it's a very culturally important movie and like oh this is like a relationship especially with your bringing an occult and stuff to watch something like that and be like okay guys it's valentine's day it's like here's your christmas for us to say here's your valentine's day present like you get to watch shrek and that's like oh wow it's very impactful scary stuff in the news uh i was really conflicted about doing this <laughs> i saw this on the interwebs mm. and carly i'll leave the question to you what horrifying what is a scary story in the news in your interpretation, something what is that it? strikes fear deep into your soul that is relevant to what's going on in the world today. Don't you think? Uh, I, yeah. So the whole story, it is a, it is a, he Carly, made me watch a trailer for it last night. It, I about vomited because it was like watching a car wreck. The, the show is called Milf Manor. Gus, disgusting. Disgust. Disgust. Viewers, critics, a rock bottom. Carly, read that thing for me, please. Milf Manor <laughs> disgusts viewers. If you think the concepts seen on reality TV are wild, wait until you hear about the newest show on TLC, leaving viewers horrified. Eight single moms in their 40s and 50s, not going to lie, they look like they're in their 60s with Botox, go on a dating show to meet men in their 20s and 30s, only to find out in the first episode, those younger men are their sons. 
Anyway, so what was so What? Yeah, I know. Incest. I'm sorry, keep going. Yes, Kimberly. (laughs) Incest. Titties. Titties. I I think at first, like, what made this so scary to me was this first person had so much Botox and so much cutting to the face. She was like this. It looked like the Joker. I shit you not. She looked like the Joker. She was like this, but also her lips were like this. But it was like, you could, like, it looked like her cheeks got done too. It was it was like she terrifying. had she had injections to Everything. increase her cheekbone like this this is horrifying it was that was like the premise is unsettling what does it say that we're going like remember jersey shore and big brother after dark and like there's probably another like um reality tv show the kardashians of course deficit housewives yeah but this is worse it feels like it just keeps progressing down to like it's just worse and worse and worse right and the people in it are just such it's just they're nasty it's just so cr- it was just it was cringe it was pure cringe and then guys tell me down below in the comment section what do you think is the worst reality tv show ever made would love to know because your thoughts milf manor is interesting because i feel like this is made just for shock and all yeah like you know what i mean like it like it's it's they have to do it for that reason they just want people to be curious milf manor ooh la la like they think there's gonna be sexy would not use that wording but okay sexy mamas in this in this like mansion or whatever and then come to find out there's these botoxed up ladies that uh also have sons and all the sons are fun fact carly helped me get turned on to the show because i did not truly know what a milf was I did or not turn you on a to gif the show. was i did not Wait, turn you on to the show gifs what, what, is it? what is it called she taught me what milf and gif no where is the joke coming from da- dad's diff Diffy? Milfs. Yes. Mothers. Replace the M with a D. Dilfs. Dilfs. Good job. <laughs> wow. I, I should this word. Oh, on... I learned what a Jeff was today. It's a dad I'd like to fuck. <laughs> How? How? <laughs> Dango uh, gifs. I don't use that shit in my uh, normal like. Uh, I don't dictionary. either. Well, you're like, no, it's a milf right there. Just I was like, because oh, I know what milf that's means. That's a cousin who thinks I was hot. I mean, I use it in my everyday language. That's a third generation cousin. I like to bang right there. Mm. I don't know the abbreviation with that, but I could spit his words out, Rob. Rob. Ro. <laughs> Got my wheels spinning. I'm like trying to think of the. That's actual... a heck of a gif right there. That's a heck of a gif <laughs> right there. Yeah, there you go. There you go. <laughs> anyway. So that was our scary stuff in the news. I just thought it was scary because on it is scary on actually a lot of levels. Oh, can we talk about my dream real quick? <gasps> because that's what brought me to this story. Yes. So for the viewers, um, I have, I don't know, we've talked about my dreams in the past, but I'll just, I guess I'll just um, restate that I have very lucid dreams at times. And about um, three nights ago, I had an extremely vivid dream that I remembered was like a movie. Like my brain literally thought of this movie I've never seen before. I've never seen anything like it really before. And the details in this dream feel like I literally could have been there in this room. And um, long story short, I'm going to try to... I woke up that morning after the dream and I couldn't remember my dream. I just remembered that I had one. Mm -hmm. And then later on that night, I was going to sleep and I was like, dang, I really wish I could remember that dream because uh, it was like, I remember it just felt real. And that's the only sensation that I had. And then I fell asleep that night. And while I was sleeping, I had a dream of remembering the dream from the night before. And in my dream, I was sitting at a typewriter going, oh my goodness, this is so insane. I have to write all of these details down and make a book about it. And so I was dreaming, but I was sitting at a typewriter, like typing it all out. And then when I woke up that next morning, I remembered both dreams. How do you think that that happened? I have absolutely no idea. Um, I do know that sometimes whenever I fall asleep, um, 
right when I'm right when I get in bed and I'm like, okay, I want to get my mind in like the right mindset to go to sleep. Sometimes I like to think about dreams that I've had before because it almost helps me like get into that dream state and just like fall asleep. And I already fall asleep like really, really fast. And I typically dream about whatever I'm thinking about right before I fall asleep. But um, now that that's <laughs> mind-blowing occurrence, Inception, um, was explained, I also want to talk about my dream because that's kind of what helped me find the story for today. I really wanted to find a story that had something to do with like being in the woods and being like followed or having this sensation of being watched. So in my dream, Tom and I bought a house and this house was like built, I want to say late 1800s like you could tell it has seen some some world wars okay it had it had a past big time not a lot of updates the whole trim between the wall and the ceiling like it was like a massive trim of like cedar dark carved swirls that looked like something that had been pulled off of like a um like a ship, like a pirate ship or something. Like it was like that kind of architecture throughout the entire like living room. And then there was this big stone fireplace that you could tell was like put there, you know, stone by stone by like one person that like built it or whatever or slaves or I don't know. Or I'm just, I'm just like throwing it out there. Like it was old time. Like in the room, I still remember what the room smelled like in my dream. It smelled like old books and musty dust and on the wall were all of these books that were covered in dust you could tell had never been taken off of the shelf for probably a hundred years and there was this big like red rug that had been there for probably 50 years that nobody's really moved like you could tell nobody's lived in this house for a long time and it was a two-story house and that was the upstairs that's the room I remember the best But I remember from the upstairs, you walk out on like this deck balcony area. You look down the yard and there's like this little meadowy area. And then surrounded by the meadow is just an an, an outline of trees. But the trees looked different. I don't know how to describe them to you. Rubbery? Besides, they didn't look... Fake? They... They looked more like they were just super thick. Like you couldn't see past the first tree. You see the tree and then after that it was just black. So an example is like you ever heard of the uncanny valley effect? Like the reason like Mithrigan, the movie we saw with the doll, the reason that messed a lot of people up is like it was almost real enough. Uh Uh-huh. And so your mind is called like, yeah. So anyway, it's the same effect there. It's, it's, It's almost right. Yeah. And your brain's like, but there's something wrong because it's not there yet. Right. And so it's like, is that what I felt like with these trees? Like they were almost like real trees? Yeah, they were trees I'd never seen before. So literally. They were un- they were trees, but I had never seen a tree that looked like that before. Got it. So you're more like you're a survivalist and you know like, hey, that's not a maple white oak. Right. Gotcha. Right. I'm like, it's not like a normal like oak tree. It's not a pine tree. It's just there were not very many leaves but it was still incredibly dark. So at one point in time, I can't remember the details at this very moment, but we were running outside because I think like something was like, we heard something, something was chasing us in the house. We could, we decided that the house was definitely haunted. Okay. And then we started to run out of the house. And as we were running away from whatever was haunting us, we ran into the woods, the forest. And then all of a sudden, it was like a Lord of the Rings moment where all of the trees, you could tell, started to, like, communicate with one another and started to, like, bend over. And then you could tell they were trying to, like, follow us. But, of course, like, this is running. It was kind of like a horror movie, a horror nightmare. It got tunneled. Yeah, it, but it was definitely, like, a nightmare. <laughs> um, I don't remember what happened after that, but... Remembering that dream made me want to find a story for everyone this evening about being terrified in the woods. So, prepare yourselves for the tale of 
Tell me your name. I found this in Travis's room. I don't know what he was writing it for, maybe just for himself, but I doubt that. We worked together, Travis and me, for the National Park Service. I'm not going to tell you which park. That might be a bit too much information, not that it matters, really. You won't believe me, but I've got no desire for someone to come out here and start bugging me about all of this. On the other hand, Travis wrote pretty well. I reckon his work should see the day of light. <laughs> I figured no one will believe it anyway, but maybe it's the right thing to do. Perhaps some of you will listen, and you'll take a bit more care in the woods when camping. Perhaps it will lift a little weight off my conscience. This is what he wrote. September 3rd, 2020. Yesterday I had the weirdest experience of an already odd year. I mean, sure, 2020 is one for history books, and we still got three months to go, but this was just the oddest thing I've ever heard. I don't know what to make of it yet, but I think I should write it down. I want to remember this. I've been out here for six months now. I did all the training and got posted to a small park back in March. It was great to have a job and a career when other people I know weren't doing so well. I got partnered up with Sam. She's great, knows her stuff, but she won't put up with any foolishness. Not just that, she could kick my ass from here to Canada and not break a sweat. She's a tough thing, but I'd trust her with my life. God damn. At this point, the park is getting pretty busy. With all the COVID restrictions, people can't travel overseas anymore, so they seem to be coming out here more. Of course, that does mean more people drinking and doing foolish things. Your average city visitor is not really at home in the wild, which means more search and rescue for people like Sam and I. Today was another one. Sam and I were called to a campsite just, at, just outside the woods. A couple, of their, a couple in their 20s had wandered off and not returned. By the time we got there, it was 4 p.m. and they'd been gone since 12 o'clock. So it wasn't just a matter of a young couple looking for a private spot for some serious bonding. No, these people were definitely lost. Sam was not very happy about this. She seems to have a pretty low opinion of people who only leave their cities once a year. We have a job to do, though, so we started through the woods, heading in the direction they gave us. Sam's not a big talker, so things were pretty quiet as we headed in among the trees. As I started across a small clearing, I saw a movement out of the corner of my eye. I caught a quick glimpse of a woman, maybe ten yards away. It seemed like she had brown hair, perhaps, and blue clothes. Despite the distance, I could hear a weak voice calling. Help me, please. I started to turn toward her, and suddenly Sam was in my face. Her hands roughly grabbed my head and stopped it from turning. That's jarring. <laughs> you don't want to do that, she said. She grabbed my shoulder and pulled me forward away from the woman. But there's a girl, I said, trying to turn my head. Sam got to one side of me, between the girl and me. I know, kid, she said. Just keep walking forward. She pushed me hard, sending me stumbling forward while she shouted at the forest. What's your name? The woman, whoever she was, didn't answer. All I could hear was, help me, please, I really need help. Her voice seemed to be getting weaker. Sam was behind me now and still pushing me away. She shouted again, tell me your name and we'll help you. I heard the woman's voice again. Please, I need help so bad. Travis please. I stopped still until Sam shoved me in the back again, sending me forward. The woman had called my name. I took a couple of steps, swung back to face Sam. She said my name. She knows me. We have to help her. It's mm -hmm. our job, damn it. Sam stepped right up to me, her face inches from mine. Her face had a strange mix of anger and fear. She stared straight into my eyes. You want to go? You go alone, she said. And if you do, you ain't coming back. I'm mm. not going to vanish just because you want to play the hero. Now get moving and come with me. Shit. She pushed past me and kept heading out to the clearing. I wanted to see who the woman was. I wanted to help her, but something in Sam's face made me think again. Numbly, feeling guilty, I followed her out of the clearing. Not long after, we found the missing couple. 
I was barely listening while Sam berated them. They sheepishly followed us back to their friends and then went back to and then we went back to the station. As soon as the door was shut, I asked, "So, what was that about?" Sam flopped into a seat. "What? Dumb townies don't know if they got lost don't know if they get lost going uphill, they should go downhill." <laughs> My feelings from the afternoon boiled over. She'd been bossing me around like I'd failed a test, like there was something I should know and didn't. No, that woman, why'd you push me away? She didn't, she didn't look at me. Long story. I refused to be put off. I've got time, so spill it. Sam sighed. You really want to know? Okay, I'll tell you, but you've got to promise me you're not going to tell anyone. What is it? I asked. Some sort of hazing for the newbie? She looked up at me, not a trace of humor on her face. Promise, kid. I sat down and looked at her. Her body language, her face, all spoke of a resigned misery. She didn't look like someone who just hazed a new kid. She looked like someone with the weight of the world on her shoulders. I promise. At the time, I meant it. Now I don't know. Maybe people need to know. The story Sam told me went something like this. Honestly, I don't know what they are. I don't think anyone does. My old supervisor didn't know, and he'd been here for 40 years. The first day I was here, he tells me, you hear a, car, a girl calling for your name, calling for help in the woods, don't go help her. Don't look at her. Don't do anything unless she can tell you her name. Why? Because those things don't have names. Maybe they don't understand what a name is. Perhaps they don't understand the question. Perhaps they figure they're so powerful, they don't need one. Thing is, though, they'll do anything to make you look at them. They'll call for help. They'll be all pathetic, like pleading with you. A young guy like you, they might be offering sex. They'll say they know you, know your mom, anything to get you to look at them. I wasn't really following this, but I asked, what happens if you look at them? No sex. I had the same question. Adam, my old boss, he didn't know either. He does now. But he isn't around to tell. See, all I know is, if you look at them, you walk off and you don't come back. This was getting weird, so I thought I'd shift the subject. Maybe get a second opinion? Where's Adam now? She laughed more of an abrupt snort. He looked. Sam wasn't looking at me anymore. She was staring out the window, focused on nothing I could see, but I guessed she was reliving everything she told me. It was a stupid lost dog. Some idiot lost their dog up past West Ridge. We were out looking for it, Adam and me. Then from behind us, we heard a voice calling, Adam. Now that didn't work. We kept moving forward. Then we heard a girl's voice. A panicked girl's voice. The voice of a scared child. Grandpa, it said. Adam's granddaughter. She died, drowned in a pool about four months before that. That voice, though, it sounded just like her. I see Adam come to a halt. I see him turn around. I hear him whisper, Aubrey? I can see the exact moment he looked right at it. His eyes got huge. Then they just glazed over. His face just goes slack. He starts walking, walking back to where the voice was coming from. I screamed at him. I shouted, but he just walks past me, heading back behind me to the voice. I wanted to turn to stop him, but there was no way in hell I was going to go back there. He passed me, and I started walking the other way, away from the voice. I'm not going back there. I walked away like a coward and we never found his body. Sam stopped for a minute, and then she turned to me, focusing on me again. We never found his body, she repeated. You never do find any bodies. We found his old army dog tags, his wedding ring on a branch halfway up a tree. I got no idea what happened to him or the others, but I know he never returned. He never, I never want to find out why. She got up and grabbed a beer from the fridge. She finished the can faster than I'd seen her drink anything before. My head was swimming. 
I didn't want to believe her, but the way she'd spoken, the certainty in her voice, and the apparent dismay over her cowardice convinced me. Then I felt a chill. If she was telling the truth, then those things were out there. I'd nearly looked at one today. Then another thought struck me. Why don't other people know about this? Why isn't something being done? Sam shrugged. People know. Some people. And in the end, rather than them us. Than, the, than us. Sam shrugged. People know. People know. Some people. And in the end, rather them than us. What are you talking about? Look, Travis. Understand this. It or they. I don't even know if it's one or more. But whatever... It needs people. So we close the park. Then what? Do you think it'll stay here? Nah. It'll go hunting. You want that thing in the suburbs? Or you want it here? Taking the odd idiot. I was shocked by her callousness. <laughs> um, I was shocked by her callousness. I wanted to argue, but something in her face told me this was not the time. That's what happened yesterday. I wrote it down as well as I can remember it, I don't honestly know what to make of it. I can see that Sam believes she's telling the truth. I know what we heard in the forest yesterday. It's all so unreal, though. That's why I want to write this down. I want to be able to come back and look at this later and see what I should do after I've had time to think. September 15th, 2020. It happened again. And now I believe Sam. Some unprepared tourists had gone and broken his ankle in a ditch. Sam and I went out to get him. As we walked toward the site of the incident, I spotted movement out of the corner of my eye again. I guessed what it was. Even worse, we would have to walk past it to get to the site. I felt my flesh crawl. Sam's story suddenly seemed too real. I did not want to get close to whatever it was. In a panic, I stopped Sam and I said, what do we do now? Sam said, in what I thought was an amazingly calm voice, we walk on. Getting close doesn't cause any problems. Don't look and you'll be fine. We kept walking down the path. I found myself getting closer to Sam than normal. I guess I just wanted that human companionship. Help me, please help me, the voice started. This time it was a child's voice. Sam kept looking straight ahead. I didn't have the strength, and I looked down at the ground. I heard Sam ask its name. It didn't give a name. Instead, it said in a childish voice, Please, I'm so hungry. I think I'm lost. Help me, please. We kept walking on, getting closer. It was hard to ignore its childish, begging voice. Travis, Sam, someone, please help me. I'm so cold. It took all of my self-control not to look up. We got a few yards away, walking past the spot where the voice was coming from. It kept whining at us. Please, you have to help me. Please. As we passed, I felt it. A wave of cold seemed to flow over as if I'd just opened the door to my freezer. Goosebumps ran up my arms. My teeth started to chatter. I could smell it. It smelled like dirty pond water. Like a pond that had no outlet, that had started to go bad. The smell was piercing. It seemed to climb into my nose and up into my brain. I felt wrong. My body told me that this was a bad thing. There was a feeling in the pit of my stomach. Like that feeling of anxiety just before something terrible happens. And you know you can't stop that bad thing. At that point, I knew Sam hadn't lied to me. That thing was real, and it was wrong. As we passed, it called after us. Where are you going? Come back! I need you! I want my mommy! As we got further away, it seemed to stop. I don't know if we just got so far away that we couldn't hear it, or if it gave up. I know I never want to get that close ever again. I never want to feel like that. October 16th, 2020. I've started looking into these things, certainly not looking at them. Since I've been here, over a hundred people have gone missing. Over a hundred. Not that you'd know it. The local cops know 
what the situation is. They provide convenient documents for us to sign, accident, animal attack, drowning, it's all covered up. The thing or things that has gotten over 100 people in this park, what if it's not alone? What if others are hanging around at the parks? In other parks, other wilderness locations, how many more people do they get? I can't stay silent. I need to let people know. If I say nothing, I'm complicit in their disappearance or worse. I have to get a message out. I'm going to post this journal, maybe with a couple of the police reports. If you are in the park, be careful. If a girl calls you, don't look at her. Not until she gives you her name. I don't know what happens if you do, if they do get to you, but I know you never come back. And that was the tale of Tell Me Your Name. Great fucking story. Uh, huge shout out. I don't know. Like, I get what it has to do with your dream, I guess. Not really. No, it's the woods. But it's like that really reeks vibes of missing 411 or Wendigo. Or a mixture of both. The Wendigo being very much, it doesn't. That's well, a siren, I think. Yeah. Yeah. And that's what I meant. Like, isn't a Wendigo just a wood sir- a siren of the woods? Like, the idea, like, so Wendigo's. Oh, so, guys, like, so the Wendigo's biggest thing is. It is super fast. It, it could just destroy you if it wanted to, but it tries to lure you out. It can mimic voices extremely well. And so it mimics your loved ones. It draws you away before it tries to prey on you. And so I thought, I really felt like, ooh, this is a lot like, again, Supernatural, like season one, episode like one, or, you know, one of our first episodes over on the channel talking about the Wendigo too, where it's like, yeah, what it does is like pulls you away from the group and it can do its thing. But then also 411, where it's like, the whole government connection. It's like, Hey, listen, you know, like I'm just a janitor here. Just clock in, clock out. It is what it is. Right. And that's what I almost like about it is like the story of just being at this level of like, listen, if there was a cover up, we always go straight to like the FBI or, you know, the X-Files thing. It's like, well, it's the president's behind it, but you don't think you don't go down 10 levels to the guy that's like, listen, I literally just cleaned the floors here. It's a paycheck. I have six kids like, and I've always found that fascinating because I've, I've, I've had those thoughts before where it's like, where you ever see the X-Files and it's like Scully and he's into the super secret base and they're testing aliens. It's like, but you know, everyone that works there is probably not in on this. There right. is literally a janitor there. It's like, listen, right. There's I'm literally a janitor bills. that cleans the birth, the, the, the bathrooms. And he's like, it, I'm it, just it, mopping the floor. Listen, I just keep my head down. I get a clearance. It's a fantastic paycheck. Right. Right. It's a great you paycheck. Know, All I have to do is mop. The floor. You know, like, I didn't think of that when I was younger, but now that I'm older and, you know, clearance is like, I get it. Yep, <laughs> yeah, There get are it. totally people at these secret bases that are like, like, listen, because of the clearance, I get a fantastic paycheck and I have great health insurance. Right. I don't care what's going on here. Right. Just do the job so I can go home. And I love that about her. It's like, I don't, I don't care. I'm making bank. That's all I care about. You literally keep your head down. Sam's like, just keep your head down and be glad it's not in the suburbs. <laughs> yeah, I just, I, I love that. I love that so much. I, I for some, that was the best part. Like, well, better here than out in the cities. <laughs> it's like, yeah, it's like fair. It's a good, okay, yeah, fair enough. I, I don't know. I just, I just like that because always with these these tales of cover ups, it's always we always talk about, oh, it's the president behind it. It's like, yeah, but the structure, and it's like not everyone's gonna think that. It's like, listen, it's above my pay grade. It's like. Yep, yeah, I agree. On to you there. I fair appreciate enough. Yeah, fair enough. Like, we're not talking about whose fault this is in the story. That's not the point of the story. It's told from her point of view and her friend who might just be like, quote, I know it's a park ranger probably, but like, it's basically the janitor here. It's above her pay grade because now you know the cops are involved and they're forging documents and it also shows you how easy that would be. Yep. And I, again, guys, go back. Please watch this online. It's a very good documentary series. It is uh, Missing 411. Um, it's eerie. Like how many things line up and you have missing people and the FBI shows up when they're not supposed to. It's mm-hmm. like, huh? And then like nothing is found, but a whistle or dog tags. Right. Right. Not even body. Like, barely an article of clothing. And you it's have like... people that are always in the outdoors, no problems with the outdoors and they just disappear. And it's like, that's freaking weird. Even that kid, the mountain lion thing. It's like, Oh yeah, it got all the way up there and the clothes were fine. Right. It's like, what? That makes no sense. Right at all it's creepy i literally just gave myself goosebumps thinking about that oh my god that is cool oh god that's creepy uh or the dogs the scent dogs 
I got goosebumps reading about it whenever he was saying, like, the closer they got, the colder they got. Oh, my God. And, like, the smell. They smelled like musty pond water. Joe Rogan had those kids on his show. Um, Yeah. Just keep talking real quick, and I will find what episode it was. Are you talking about the the guys that go? YouTubers. um, Go into, like, haunted locations and, like, try to talk to spirits and ghosts and stuff. It was one of his more recent podcasts. I don't remember the names of the guys. Sam and Colby. Sam Gobachery. You don't have to say their last names. Sam and Colby are YouTubers best known to audiences well, for their exploration didn't know of haunted and paranormal minds. Needed their last names to find their YouTube channel. But Sam anyway. Goldbach and Colby Brock. Yeah, so Sam Golby Bach. Goldbach. Okay. Anyway, those two are paranormal investigators on YouTube. And so what they talked about is entities levitating all that other jazz. And they're like, oh yeah, guess what? Um talking about the cold spells things like that and demonic possession and stuff and it's like oh mm-hmm. yeah it's like so weird how all that is there's a through line with all that that people do feel cold <laughs> uh, just i'm sorry i just remember all the stuff from that whole thing and joe rogan's like yeah 100 like there are spirits out there because you can't have people over like a million years and you have so many people say like oh yeah i saw a ghost they were like, even they said that they they went in and they literally had like a camera set up and um, as soon as they yeah. thought that they, yeah, in the ship, as soon as they thought they turned the camera off, um, then that's whenever it started like interacting with them because it didn't want to be recorded. And here they had like the audio, what audio recorded or whatever. And they were communicating with it by like saying, okay, knock once for yes, twice for no. And then they started asking more like complicated questions. Well, is heaven real? And said no. Right. And the Christian friends got freaked out because, yeah. like, well, at that point it's a devil. Because right. Of course the devil would be like, oh, yeah, no, heaven's not real. Right. So, wait a minute. So, like you're saying your spirits like that thought. <laughs> But yeah, it, it is it's like to me like that was creepy. But they talked well, about is, they made it think that it was a dark spirit or it was a demon. But basically. they talk about cold too and that whole thing, and yes. like chills and things like that. And that's so weird. Like even in this situation, it's the chill, it's the cold, like something that's there that's not supposed to be there, and mm-hmm. that's very eerie. And it wants to call out your name. It wants to lure you. Yeah, it's not just gonna jump in. It's like look at me. It's like <laughs> it, it has to like lure you out, which is like such a I don't know. It that makes it more interesting. Like it's almost like it's almost a a religious experience where it has to tempt you into looking first yeah that's how it has to get you right it can't if it, if it literally just had to look at you like medusa right it could like smack you in the face it could grab you, you know? yeah look at me and then boom i got you mm-hmm. but it can't do that it has to make you want it almost like mm-hmm. a siren like mm-hmm. you said great story that's a really good story. Thank you. And then again, guys, we have a fantastic scary thing in the news. It's going to come next week with our episode. This was week 67. Week 67 is in the books. Uh, thanks again, guys. Please love your moms. Please leave us a review on Apple Podcasts. That would be really wonderful to help That'd us be out. Awesome. Yeah. And uh, that. comment uh, down below. Give us comments. I have a new, I have a big super story that I've been working on for a while now that'll be coming out soon. And it was because of a fan leaving a comment. If you leave a comment and it's not really crazy, of an ask, I will do it if it's not breaking any laws internationally or nationally. And we'll see you next time on Spirits and Ghost Stories. Bye.